Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night, Going Deeper in the Word. We've been looking at the book of Acts and also in how this applies to us as a church today. We see the New Testament church being birthed in Acts chapter 2, which Seth talked about the last two weeks. And how did they function? What did they do? Uh, how did they evolve? How did they reach not only Jerusalem, but Judea, Samaria, and ultimately around the world? How did they make an impact where it says that they were turning the world upside down? As the Bible says in Acts 4, they were ordinary, unschooled uh, men and women, but they'd been with Jesus. So there's something in there for us today that when we're with Jesus, when we allow Jesus to make an impact in our lives, when we allow him to change this heart of stone into a heart of flesh, then everything around us change. And the change is from the inside out. It's never from the outside in. 
but God begins to work on the inside and then it begins to work on the outside with the people that were around, with our families and those uh, that we work with. It affects all of life when Jesus is at the center of everything. Now, we're going to be in Acts 3 tonight, but I, before we begin, I want you to understand it was prophesied about Jesus, the Messiah coming, and that there would be a new covenant, um, that he would become a curse, and he did become a curse on the tree for us, so no longer are we under the curse. But in the very beginning, God's heart has always been to have a temple for him to dwell in and to be present with his people. When he created in the garden everything, he said it was good. But when he created it, Adam and Eve, he said it's very good. You see, Adam and Eve and going forward were the object of his love and affection. Why did he do it? Because he wanted to. He wanted someone that he could love and then also we could love him back, not making us robots, not uh, demanding and commanding that we love him. Just as First John says, he first loved us. He ran after us. It wasn't us. Most of all of us have run from him. We've gone our own way. But yet he ran after us because his heart has always been to have a temple. And so the garden, in a very real sense, was the first temple. It was the first place where Adam and Eve uh, abided with God in the garden. God would come down and they'd walk in the cool of the day. They would talk and they would have fellowship and commune with one another. We know that sin entered into the world and caused a separation from Adam and Eve and God and the rest of us until Jesus came. Then we see there's a tent that God's presence would come. Then there was a tabernacle. And even Solomon's uh, tabernacle um, was huge. And that's where the presence of God dwelt. In Joshua 3, the Ark of the Covenant, that represented the presence of God. So wherever the Ark went, that's where God was going. And so God has always wanted a temple to dwell in so he could be with his people. The problem is we as believers have made that temple to be a building. We've made that to be a place. Ultimately, the temple God was desiring was you and I. It says our body is the temple of God. God ultimately wanted to dwell within us, not around us, not come on us, but dwell in us. And so when he came in us, we became the body of Christ. We became the church made up of many parts, and God dwells in us and through us. So as we understand that God's purpose was, was to bring Jesus, to bring reconciliation and redemption to us so that now we can come to the presence of God with confidence and assurance and not have a priest, not have someone as a middle person interceding for us and going before God. But now, as a priesthood of believers, every one of us can go before God. So we're talking about the church here, where God dwells in us individually and God's Spirit leads us corporately. And Acts 2 was the fulfillment of what Joel said in Joel 2, and I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. They'll prophesy, they'll have dreams and vision, not just the old, the young. It's not just for a few, it's not just for a select called pastors, apostles, prophets, but it's for the body of Christ. And so we see in Acts 2, Peter gets up and preaches that first gospel message. And it says in verse 37, and they were pricked, they were pierced in their hearts. And they said, what do we have to do? 
And Peter said, repent means to turn from something and turn to something, to stop doing what you're doing and go towards what you're supposed to be doing. And so on that day, they repented, they confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, the ones that they had crucified, and uh, they were baptized, 3,000 of them, actually probably more than 3,000. And the church began, the church began at, at the hands of the apostles, and God used the apostles to establish the church with signs, wonders, and miracles, testifying of the resurrection of Jesus and speaking of the truth of eternal life. So when they did that, people were hungry. Some people rejected it. But all of a sudden, people began to come to Christ left and right, families, individuals, even government officials, those who were uh, high ranking came to faith in Christ. So the church was birth and God used the apostles at first to establish. Now let me say something. And a lot of times we've taken that and the church has used that to say that only the preacher or pastor, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists and teachers, the only ones that can pray for people that uh, have the anointing of God that can do signs, wonders, and miracles. God used the apostles first to establish the church. But as we will see in the church, then it began to spread to Stephen, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, Apollos, Barnabas, Timothy, many, many others. God's plan wasn't just for a select anointed person to do all the work of the ministry, because we know in Ephesians 4 that those fivefold ministries are to equip the body to do the work of Jesus. And Jesus said, the things that I did, you're going to do more than what I did. So it's not just a few people, but it's the body of Christ. And so we'll see that over and over, how God begins to use the different parts in the body uh, for his kingdom. Now we come to Acts chapter 3, and after the apostles and those 120 are born again and the 3,000, they continued to do what they normally did. They would go to the temple morning, afternoon, and night three times a day to pray. Was it because it was religious? No, it was an opportunity for them to share the gospel. It was an opportunity for them to be used by God wherever they went. And so we come to Acts chapter three, and Peter and John are going to the temple at a time of prayer. Now you guys know the story, but it's this, they're going, and there is a guy by the gate beautiful who comes every day and he begs. That's his job. And I've preached a message on this, but I don't want to get into all the things in this. But what I want you to see is how the church functioned very quickly and how the church was led by the Holy Spirit immediately. And so they're going to the temple to pray. There's a guy begging, he asks for money. Peter turns to him and the guy thinks, okay, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get some shillings out of this. And Peter says this, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And they grabbed his hand, he got up, he began to leap and jump and praise God. He was known, he was known throughout that area as one who would come every day to beg. And then they went into the temple to pray. Here's what I want you to see, and here's what I want you to think about this week. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to use you? If you're going to Carrefour, or you're going to a grocery store, do you go and come back? 
Or are your eyes open to the opportunities that God's given us as the church? These guys were just going to pray, but yet all of a sudden it opened up, they prayed, the man was healed. Are, you, are your eyes open? Secondly, do you believe God can do signs, wonders, and miracles? If you don't, you won't pray for people to be healed. Now let me tell you something about healing. It's not our job to heal. You can pray in tongues, you can pray loud and shout and dance. That doesn't produce anything. It is God that heals. Our job is to be faithful to what God has called us to do, to lay hands on the sick, to care for the poor, the widows, and the orphans. And then we watch the supernatural power of God at work in the lives of the people we're ministering to. And so, do you believe the Holy Spirit wants to use you? Do you believe in signs, wonders, and miracles? They didn't die. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The miracles didn't die. The signs and wonders didn't die. But what has died is the church. We have become where we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power of God. Now, every one of us have doubted. Every one of us have prayed for someone, and we thought, oh, that was a terrible prayer. I didn't feel anything. But see, feelings have nothing to do with it. It is an act of faith and obedience as the church that we just do what God calls us to do. In Samuel, God says, I don't want burnt offerings. I don't want your cows and, and bulls, but I want an obedient heart. For us as the church, KVC, God doesn't want us doing our little sacrifices and doing our little religious things. He wants our heart to walk in obedience to what God's word says, to do the stuff, to read the red where Jesus said this and that, that we simply believe it in childlike faith and then we go forward and trust him. A matter of fact, in this story, um, the people saw this guy leaping and dancing. They came running up to Peter and John, and Peter immediately discerned, they're, they're going to make us an idol. And he says, do you think that this was even done by our own power? But know this, it was through Jesus Christ, whom you guys crucified, that this man is made whole right now. And see, when we understand it has nothing to do with us, but everything to do with God, and we testify of Jesus in our lives, then God gets the glory because you and I know we can't heal anybody. We know that I can't or you can't cast out a demon. We know we can't uh, um, produce things that only God can produce. We know it's only him. So what we do is say, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me. So this week, I want you to ask God every morning to say, God, give me an opportunity today to be like Peter and John. You know, it's not about how much money you have or how much money you give them. Remember the story? People were going to the temple and the rich people were plopping down some cash and this little old lady comes up and puts two, two shillings in. And he said, that woman didn't give out of her abundance, but her lack. And he commended the woman for her faith. Sometimes we may not have the money, but what we have is Jesus. Jesus makes the difference. It's all about him. So this week, remember Acts 3, the story of Peter and John at the gate beautiful and the lame man and ask the Holy Spirit to use you, give you courage, fill you with courage and boldness. Because if he doesn't fill you with courage and boldness, you'll probably not do it. But if the Holy Spirit fills you, he will give you the unction to do it. Ask him to give you opportunities 
today, starting with today, to see what he sees, opportunities around you. It may be just simply to pray for someone, to encourage someone, to give them a loaf of bread, to just put your arm around them and share the love of Christ with them. It doesn't have to be deep and profound. A matter of fact, most of our acts are simple, but under the leading of the Holy Spirit, these simple, profound acts have great power that set people's hearts free. So we'll look again next week, probably at uh, Acts chapter 4, and uh, as we move through the book of Acts, and as we see as a church at KVC, what do we need to do like what they did in the first century. God bless. We'll see you next week.